Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the highest yield sections on the PsychSo section, operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a type of learning that occurs through positive, negative punishments or reinforcement. It was developed by B.F. Skinner in the mid 20th century, and this theory posits that behavior is shaped by the rewards and punishments that follow it. Through this process, animals, including us humans, can learn to associate certain behaviors with certain outcomes, and then adjust their behavior accordingly, aka learning. The basic components of operant conditioning are the behavior, the consequences, and the schedule of reinforcement. So that's what we'll be covering in this video. The behavior is the action or response that the organism exhibits, while the consequence is the outcome that follows. Reinforcement can be either positive or negative, and refers to the consequences that increase the likelihood of the behavior being repeated in the future. So, in simple words, if we're reinforcing something, we want the outcome to be the same. So, if you have a kid and you want your kid to get good grades, we are going to do some sort of reinforcement to make sure that that kid is getting good grades, if they're getting good grades. On the other hand, we have punishment. This is when we don't want somebody to be repeating a certain behavior in the future. For example, if somebody is stealing, you might want to punish them to make them steal less. Now, there are two different types of punishment and reinforcement. We have positive and negative. Positive reinforcement occurs when a behavior is followed by a reward or pleasant outcome, such as a treat or a praise. This will increase the likelihood of that behavior being repeated in the future. Whereas negative reinforcement occurs when a behavior is followed by the removal of an unpleasant stimulus, such as if we are shocking a rat continuously and then we stop shocking it, well, stopping the shock is a reward, but it's negative reinforcement because we're removing something bad to promote some sort of activity. Punishment, as mentioned earlier, can be either positive or negative. Positive punishment involves the presentation of an unpleasant stimulus, such as a spanking or scolding, to decrease the likelihood of the behavior being repeated. Whereas negative punishment involves the removal of a pleasant stimulus, such as taking away a favorite toy to decrease the likelihood of a behavior being repeated. So this is some of the fundamentals you want to make sure you absolutely understand for operant condition. If this doesn't make sense quite yet, pause the video, look at the chart, maybe quiz yourself, ask yourself some questions. And if that doesn't work, rewatch this. This is a really, really, really critical aspect to understand before moving on. Because next, we're going to complicate it by talking about schedules of reinforcement. This is another incredibly important component of operant conditioning, and it refers to the pattern or frequency of rewards and punishments that follow behavior. Reinforcement schedules can be either continuous, meaning that the behavior is rewarded every time it occurs, or intermittent, meaning that the behavior is only rewarded some of the time. Intermittent reinforcement schedules can be further subdivided into ratio and interval schedules. A good way to separate these two is that ratio schedules are based on the number of responses. So I drew a little hashtag for a number here, whereas the intervals are always time-based. A way that helps me remember this is ratio. First learned about that in math class, and math class has numbers. An interval, that's the other one. Let's talk about variable reinforcement schedules. These are especially effective at shaping behavior, much better than a fixed schedule. In these schedules, the rewards or punishments are given at varying intervals, making it difficult for the organism to predict when they will occur. This creates a sense of uncertainty that can be highly motivating as the organism continues to engage in behavior in the hopes of receiving you know, a reward. Whereas a fixed ratio, they're getting it every time, the organism expects it, they're like, okay, if I peck three times, I'll get something. Now think about what type of schedule gambling on a slot machine would fit into. Well, let's think about this. It can't be an interval because it's not time-based. It's all about how many cranks you do on the lever. Okay, so we figured out it isn't time-based. Now, is it fixed or variable? Well, let's test this. If it was fixed, every, say, 10 times we pulled the lever, we would win. Whereas it's variable, you could pull just once and win, or you could pull 100 times and never win. That sounds more like how a slot machine works. Gambling is a variable ratio, which we know is one of the most addicting ways to use operant conditioning, which the MCAT loves testing. That's why I bring this up. So whenever you see gambling on the MCAT, you wanna be thinking variable ratio operant conditioning.
But operant conditioning can be used in more than just gambling, including education, parenting, and business. By understanding the principles of operant conditioning, educators can use rewards and punishments to encourage desired behaviors in their students. Parents can use the same to shape their children or dog's behavior. And in business, managers can use rewards or punishments to incentivize employees. So the MCAT will test this on a variety of different subjects. That's why I'm giving you these examples here, because you definitely want to understand operant conditioning. It is huge on the psycho section. By understanding these principles of operant conditioning, you will grab way more points on the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video on operant conditioning, and I will see you next time.